Kyle Winjack here, and I've got a couple EQ tips that are going to help take your mixes to the next level. So we're going to talk about the boost and search technique today, and that's going to help you find what frequencies you want to accentuate and what you want to cut. And then we're going to look at using high shelves to create more depth in your mix and also mid side processing that will help carve out a little bit more room for your vocals or other elements. And that's really going to help make them pop. So here we are in Logic, and I've got a rough mix of a track that I've been working on. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the boost and search method on this keyboard track to find some of the sweet spots that we might want to accentuate and maybe some spots that we might want to look into cutting to make room for other things. So the way we do this is we're going to set the cue here at the bottom to only boost a very narrow frequency range, and then we're going to boost it quite extremely so that we over exaggerate and we could hear what it's doing to the sound. So that key's a little bit too narrow. Okay, so what I'm hearing is that um, around 200, it's starting to step on the toes of the bass, which is actually sousaphone in this track. So I'm going to grab another band and I'm going to cut that a little bit. All right, and that's starting to sound much better to me. So I might also boost a little bit right above that because that, that spot just sounds so nice on this, uh, on this Rhodes patch. So it's ultimately up to your discretion what you think sounds good, what you want to boost, what you want to cut. But the boost and sweep method is a good way of gauging what you're hearing by over-exaggerating the frequencies and then you dial it back to a more modest cut and play around with it there. You'll also notice that I'm working in the context of the track. Occasionally I will solo things, but I think it's always important to make sure that your EQ is what sounds right for the track and not just what makes the instrument sound the best on its own. You may have fallen into the trap of soloing an instrument and it sounds great on its own, but when everything sounds great on their own, then there's no room for the other instruments to breathe. And you end up having a very cluttered mix and wasting a lot of time. Now, another technique I wanted to talk about is using high shelves to create more depth in a mix. So a lot of people will use reverb to push things further back and heavy compression to draw things closer. And this does work, but it's not the only way to achieve that effect. And sometimes you might want something to seem like it's a little bit further away without necessarily adding more reverb onto it. When an instrument is played further away from you, you can't hear as much of the extreme high frequencies in that instrument. That's just the way acoustics and human hearing works. So it makes sense that if we boost those high frequencies, it'll sound a little bit closer to us. And if we cut them, it'll sound a little bit further away. It's a subtle thing, but it's something that I find very useful. So let's try that on this organ. I think I want it to sound a little bit further back in the mix. And so I'm going to demonstrate that by adding a high shelf filter with a bit of a cut. Let's try it. So I'm over exaggerating it right now just to uh, show you the effect. That's more than I want. But just play around with it and find the settings that are right for you.
Typically, the more subtle EQ moves are best. They're going to end up being more natural sounding, and it's a lot of small, minute details that add up to the finished product of a polished mix. But don't be afraid to be heavy-handed with it at first either so that you can hear what changes are actually being made, and you can always reduce that later, and you'll get a little bit more finesse as you learn to use your EQs better. And the third and final tip today is using mid-side processing. So in Logic, the stock EQ plugin actually has a setting that allows you to do this built into it. If you go to processing here, you have mid only, sides only, and you can actually do left and right as well. So depending on what DAW you use, you might have mid-side processing built into your stock EQ. If not, there are plenty from uh, different third parties. There are a lot of different ways to use this technique, but one of the most useful ones is to carve out a little bit of extra space in your stereo image for vocals or another lead element. So in this case, there are no vocals, so we'll treat the organ as the sort of lead that we want to carve out a little bit more space for. But the point here is to identify where in the mix it's starting to sound cluttered, and then we want to take away some of the frequencies in other instruments to leave more space for that to ring through. And the reason that we're EQing only the mid instead of the entire width of the stereo image is that we can get rid of some of these frequencies in the middle and free up that space without sacrificing too much of the tone because you still have room for those frequencies on the edges of the stereo image, so why not use it? If you make a cut across the board, it can sometimes make your instruments end up sounding thin. Ultimately, it's a bit of a tug of war because for one thing to sound very thick and full, you have to leave room for it. So not everything can be just huge all the time, but there are certain things you can do like this to finesse it. And again, a lot of this stuff to do with mixing is really a matter of taste, and there's not always one right answer but these are just some techniques that you can try and experiment and see what works for you. So here we go. Okay, so I am going to solo it now, and I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit just to uh, make it a little bit more plain to hear. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip between uh, EQing only the, the middle of the keys, and then I'm going to change the processing to stereo so it'll affect the entirety of the sound stage. So here's mid only. It's still quite a big cut, but... When I go to stereo, and then back to mid, you can, really, you can hear a lot more of, uh, of those low mids in the side of the soundstage, and there's room for it there. That's definitely something I would be likely to use maybe on an acoustic guitar so that you can keep that warmth, um, especially if it was like a solo act or a duo act where you want a nice, full, rich guitar sound, but you still want to carve out some room for, uh, for the vocals. That would be uh, maybe the ideal time to use that, but it's something that I've, I find myself experimenting with quite a lot, so it's worth checking out.